realize that all of us have a challenge. And I realize it even more today than I did yesterday. And by yesterday, I mean last week. I was in Boston and preaching, and in the middle of preaching, I felt something pull. And good thing I came home to see about my back and my heart is out of whack. And so, I work hard for it, I really did. Dehydration and sleep deprivation and fatigue. So I need somebody to pray for me. I went to see about my back, spent all night in the hospital. But thank God it's under control. But I have a lifestyle change. I've been doing this for 40 years. You know, habits are hard to change. You know, when you travel every week, five cities in a week sometimes, and back home and back there. Somebody told me this was going to happen. I just Amen. And so, I need some prayer today that I change and stop working so hard, which means, which means maybe it's already done. It's already done. Father, we honor you today. And we bless you because you know how to tap us on the shoulder. You surely know how to get our attention. We pray now for our brothers and our sisters, for the people to the left and to the right you might take us through yet to another level, to another place, another height. And I pray now that whatever my brother, my sister is in need of, that you press it into their hands right now. That you squeeze everything they need into their spirit. And make a transfer now of the Holy Ghost. Do it in a way that their minds are conscious of. I pray, God, that you break down every high place, heal every sick person, move until you get through, expose the enemy on every side, and we'll give you the glory and the praise. So we thank you right now for victory. We thank you right now for rearranging our lives. We thank you right now for making ways out of no way. We thank you right now for your provision for your supervision, for your guidance and your direction. And I just believe that somebody in this place is going to a higher height, going to another level, going to a new dimension. And I speak it done right now in the name of Jesus. So have your way in our lives. Whatever you say, whatever you say, how whatever you say, we say yes Lord in Jesus name somebody praise him again thank him just for life be of good cheer I have overcome the world amen it's offering time it's offering time amen are you excited that it's offering time are you excited or are you tired of clapping your hands amen and uh, we we certainly realize that just to have something to give is a gift from God. And he said it's better to give than to receive. And, and, and obviously so, because you can't give unless you have already received. You have to have something to give in order to give. And you have to have the will to give it. And, uh, and I'm finding out that, that you can't beat God giving just the fact that he spares lives and, and you know, preaching. Uh, I tell you, I'm learning even more now that you got to follow the principles of, of God, even if you're working for God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're not listening because you're writing big checks. Amen. There's a 
I guess it takes some time to write those zeros, and, uh, but we do honor God for life itself. Amen. Amen. Yeah, now this was supposed to be Super Sunday, and uh, uh, you know, I don't know. It seems like we have a lot of money. We keep putting off uh, getting uh, getting some money. So uh, I guess we'll do it. And I have about ten thousand uh, dollars of checks and five thousand dollars personal that I'm giving, and and folks have sent me money from around the country, and and I just won't take your money. Just don't understand. This church must be rolling in dough. Why? Why we won't take the Super Sunday money? Amen. I guess I'm giving the musicians a chance to get theirs. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, everybody, make sure you bring a, a big Super Sunday offering uh, week after next. God's willing. Amen. I got some uncles, you know. August 18th, Super Sunday. That's it. I'm not going any further than the 18th. I've got some checks that may not be any good. Uh, they've been, I've been holding them for so long. You know, it's really funny. I got an uncle. One of my uncles, he's about 80. Uh, how old is Uncle Jackie Ma? About 82, 81. My, here's my uncle, 81, right? So <laughs> he, he's calling everybody. We're having family reunion. I said, when are we? Uh, 2015. Now he's 81. And he's putting a family reunion off for three years, two, two to three years. Uh, I've got aunts 86, 87. Now, how are we going to have a family reunion in 2050? I mean, come on, man. Let's have that family reunion tomorrow. And now, <laughs> and now I go to see one thing and something else is wrong. Uh, we need that family reunion today. Amen. So uh, I say that to say uh, we've been trying to collect this uh, Super Sunday, keep putting it off, keep putting it off, but we thank God. Now, how many tithers in this house? Who believes in tithing, just in giving God a tenth? Uh, somebody just reached up and touched the air on that one. But uh, it's always good to tithe. Amen. Somehow tithing works. Somehow it works. It helps you to manage because it helps you to manage and God just honors tithing. Uh, I don't know what the trick offering is. Uh, you know, the Lord might be moving on a special way. Uh, but God is a God of principle and if you tithe, uh, then you don't need the trick offering. Amen. 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 And it's just a wonderful thing. Uh, one day I'm going to do a teaching on giving. Uh, not only giving money, but giving of yourself and understanding the principles that go with giving and the way God supports givers. Uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Uh, raise your offering to heaven. Father, we honor you again today and we thank you because you've been so generous to us, not only in money, but in life, in thought, in wisdom. You have given us, Lord, sagacity. You have given us guidance and direction. We thank you for your supervision. Now I pray, God, that you supervise our finances. Give us the wisdom to operate financially, our businesses, our jobs, our promotions, our insights, even when others won't show us what we need to do. Give us the insight to do it our personalities, give us the charisma, the personality to deal with people on our jobs, help us to overcome whatever is thrown at us, give us a cool, calm spirit so that we can keep a job under duress while we're being persecuted and, and mistreated. I pray, God, that you give us the cool, help us to absorb it and handle it until you take our enemies and put them under our feet. I pray that you take care of every household here, and I speak it done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. Amen. Now, uh, is somebody going to sing or while we receive the offering? Amen. Uh, you all ready to go home already? Amen. All right. Uh, in St. John's Gospel, chapter 16, 
and and uh, uh, this has happened to me when I was 35, when I was 44, and now 63. So, and it's always in the time of duress and stress and, and hard work. So the signal now is if I'm going to be 83, I'm going to back this thing up. I'm going to back it up, back it up. Amen. And slow it down and rest. And that means... That means nobody needs to bother me. And if I seem antisocial when church is over, it's because I'm going somewhere to go to bed. Amen. I'm going, uh, uh, been three days before this happened, three days without sleep. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, I'm going to clear my space. I don't care who's mad, who's upset. Amen. Because. I have some people who are addicted to me, and uh, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to fix their addiction. Uh, I'm going to fix it. Uh, sixteen and sixteen. A little while, he says to his disciples, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Now, if somebody were talking to you and they said that to you, uh, then the response would be uh, in 17. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, what is this that he said to us? A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me. And because I go to, my, to the Father, they said therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while and ye shall see me? Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and uh, ye shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now, therefore, have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh away from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. And then, of course, he says, these things I have spoken to you in parable time, cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in, in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. And I want to close by reading 32. Behold, no, 31, do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Look at somebody and, and just, just tell them there is a price to go to the next level. Look at somebody else and ask, are you willing to pay the price 